The sun, a colossal fireball stretching a massive 1,390,000 kilometers across the heavens. A nuclear powerhouse and the object of ancient worship for the life-giving energy it showers upon our Earth. Throughout the cosmos, hundreds of billions of stars, much like our sun, emit vast amounts of energy into space. Some are big, others small. Some burn bright, while others glow only dimly. So where did our sun and the stars come from? How were they born? And why do they die? The origins of the stars lie in dusty gaseous cloud formations known as nebulae. Over eons, these swirling masses of galactic matter slowly aggregate, forming clumps of material which continue whirling around a central axis. As these cosmic clumps increase in density, their gravitational forces intensify, pulling in more and more matter from the surrounding space. Eventually, an individual clump may acquire a mass so large it will be overcome by the powerful force of gravity and begin collapsing in on itself. If it stabilizes at a mass less than 7% that of our sun, it becomes a brown dwarf, a dimly shining sphere midway between a large planet and a small star. Because of its relatively inactive core, the brown dwarf begins cooling not long after stabilizing. Larger aggregations of matter become protostars. Over millions of years, the protostar slowly continues collapsing inwards. Eventually its core reaches a point of critical density and the internal hydrogen gas molecules fuse together under the intense gravitational pressures. The energy and helium released from these powerful fusions giving rise to a new star. Stars such as our Sun remain stable for about 10 billion years. Larger stars burn out quickly, while smaller ones such as the Red Dwarves burn slowly and last tens of billions of years. The surface temperatures of stars vary depending on their size. Temperatures may range anywhere from 2,000 to a searing 30,000 degrees Celsius. This influences the colour of a star, which may burn hues of cool red through to scorching bright white. Towards the end of its life, a star starts to run low on hydrogen, the gas which fuels its nuclear reactions. As the hydrogen supply dwindles, the star cools, while simultaneously expanding up to a hundred times its original size. Because of their monolithic dimensions, these red giants have luminosities far greater than normal stars, despite being cooler. During its latter phase, the red giant cools further and begins collapsing rapidly. Any hydrogen remaining in its outer layer is ejected, forming an enveloping gas shell known as a planetary nebula. When a red giant collapses on itself, it shrinks to the size of our Earth, or even smaller, yet retains a mass equivalent to or greater than that of our Sun. The immense pressures created by this compression generate so much energy, the star emits a brilliant blue-white glow. This so-called white dwarf continues to release energy while remaining enveloped in its planetary nebula. Over tens of thousands of years, the gas envelope slowly dissipates into the remote corners of the cosmos. Eventually, the dying star runs so low on helium, the fuel produced from hydrogen fusion, it cools and dims until all that remains is a lifeless black dwarf. On rare occasions, a star may end its life in a dramatic explosion. This spectacular cosmic event, known as a supernova, may occur after gas from a nearby star falls onto a white dwarf, or when the internal nuclear reactions of a massive star have run amok. These awesome explosions project matter at speeds one-tenth that of light, and give birth to highly dense neutron stars and pulsars.
On even rarer occasions, the mass of the exploding star is so great, its core collapses into a black hole. A sphere of matter so dense and compact, not even light can escape its gravitational pull. Some theorists speculate black holes hold the clue to time travel throughout the universe. <laughs> 